You do not need a cool bot to cool your walk-in cooler with an air conditioner. You just need to understand the two primary functions of the cool bot and replace those functions with some much cheaper off-the-shelf parts. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's get started. Hey there, I'm Jared, founder of the Vegetable Academy, where I help serious home growers work toward vegetable mastery. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a common window air conditioner to cool a walk-in cooler or cold room in your own home. First, I'll explain the two main functions of the CoolBot, and then we'll look at some of the simple equipment we can use to accomplish those same functions at a much lower cost. Now, if you just install a window air conditioner in the side of your walk-in cooler or cold room, you're going to run into a couple of problems. The first is that you can't actually set the temperature low enough to cool your food at the appropriate level. The air conditioners that we've worked with bottom out around 16 or 17 degrees Celsius. We want to store our food much cooler at 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Another problem that you'll run into potentially is that the cooling fins on the air conditioner when they're running at such a low temperature will start to ice up. And once ice builds up on the fins, the air can't flow and you lose almost all of your cooling power. So we got to adjust those two problems. One, the temperature control and two, the, the problem of icing up the fins. The CoolBot solves both of these problems in a really elegant way. First of all, to override the temperature control problems of the air conditioner, the CoolBot has a small but very important heating resistor here that heats up whenever the room is too warm. And we tape this small heating resistor to the temperature probe of the air conditioner. So while the room temperature in our cooler could be around four or five degrees Celsius, the heating element here will raise the temperature probe of the air conditioner above its minimum threshold so that it's warm enough to turn on and do some cooling work for us. So that solves the first problem. Next there's the problem of the ice. The CoolBot solves the ice buildup problem by coming equipped with a small temperature probe that we stick between the fins of the air conditioner. Whenever this temperature sensor detects that the fins on the air conditioner are about to freeze, it cuts power to its heating element here which in turn stops the air conditioner from running its cooling cycle and it's allowed to defrost. Now that's all there is to the CoolBot. Now if we can solve both of those problems in another way, we're good to go. So is this CoolBot a great idea? Yes. Does it work wonderfully? Yes. But do you need to buy it? No. There's a much cheaper alternative that can accomplish the same two functions with the same accuracy. Let's talk about that next. Now let's take a look at the equipment that we'll be using to replace the CoolBot and then we'll go install it and you can have a look at how it works. First major component is the Inkbird temperature controller. These are really easy to find on Amazon. They come equipped with a temperature sensor like this and that in turn activates a heating or a cooling device. Really easy to operate. Uh, thankfully they're pretty cheap because you will need two of them for this operation. I'll show you why they're both necessary in a couple of minutes here. Next we need some kind of heating element that's really easy to access. So we looked for something off the shelf and the best solution was a really low power 4 watt LED light bulb. We're going to make this light bulb turn on whenever we want the room to cool down. Next we want a simple light socket adapter that we can just plug into the temperature controller without any extra wiring. In some cases you, this ordinary light socket adapter might be just what you need but because we're using a a smaller powered GU10 bulb, we need an extra adapter here to screw on the top. This will make sure that our light bulb actually fits in our light socket. So that's the official setup that we're using in our situation just to plug into our temperature controller. And the last thing we'll be using is a little bit of foil tape to fasten the temperature sensor of the air conditioner onto our light bulb heating element. Now let's head to the cooler and hook this stuff up. Welcome to our walk-in cooler. This is one of my favorite rooms in our house, honestly, because of the independence it provides. We can eat from our garden on a year-round basis because of this room and the things that we can store here. But enough about that, let's get down to business. The first thing that we've done here is just install a window air conditioner, plugged it in, and we haven't adjusted any of the settings other than just 
lowering the temperature as low as possible here. And we pulled the front grill off and set that aside. We won't need that front grill at all. And behind that grill, we see the, the cooling fins here. We'll be making a couple of modifications around this area. The main point of intervention that we're going to be using to control this air conditioner now is this temperature probe. So we need to trick this temperature probe into thinking that it's warmer in this room than it actually is. The CoolBot accomplishes this by having us tape this small red heating element around the temperature probe here. Whenever the room gets too warm, the heating element in the CoolBot turns on, heats up this temperature probe, and the air conditioner turns on right away after that. We're going to replace that function of the CoolBot with a simple low-powered light bulb. So the first thing that we've got here in our setup is just a small 4-watt LED light bulb. We're going to take this temperature probe that you'll probably just find zip-tied right behind here in the coils. You're going to take that out, put it on the front of this light bulb, and tape that on. I like to use foil tape for this purpose. It's nice and sticky. Aluminum foil would work as well, but you might need to add some tape to make it nice and secure. So by adding foil to the top of this, we're containing that heat of this small light bulb and focusing it on that temperature probe. So within about 10 seconds of this light turning on, my air conditioner starts to think that it's too warm in this room, and therefore it turns on and starts to cool the room down to the desired temperature. So Anytime this light bulb is on, the air conditioner thinks it's too warm and it turns on. The way that we control this light bulb is with a temperature controller mounted here on the wall above. It's got a temperature sensor right here that detects the temperature of the room and it's set to four degrees Celsius or about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So whenever the temperature in the room rises above that, it gives power to this light bulb. Light bulb turns on, heats the temperature probe, of the air conditioner and then the air conditioner turns on. Now if we didn't have to worry about the potential of the fins icing up ever, that would be the only solution that we would need. But when we're operating our air conditioner at these lower temperatures, sometimes we can get ice buildup on the fins. We need to take an extra step to stop that from happening. So if we look a little bit further to the right here, we've got another temperature controller. The sensor for this temperature controller is inserted right down here in the fins, taking this probe and what CoolBot suggests is just to separate the, fin separate the fins just a little bit with a, a little knife. Gently push them to the side so that you can slide that temperature probe right into the middle. You don't want that temperature probe to be hovering above the surface, then it's not actually measuring the temperature of the fins where the ice is going to start to build up. The purpose of this temperature probe in the fins is to warn us when the fins are getting too cold and starting to potentially build up ice. So we want to set this temperature much lower. Right now, the second temperature controller is set to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So whenever this temperature sensor detects that the fins have dropped below 1.5 degrees Celsius and there's a greater risk of frost buildup, it cuts power to this whole primary system over here where we've got the light bulb controlling the air conditioner. So when that light bulb turns off, the air conditioner doesn't think that the room is too warm anymore and the compressor stops running it goes back into fan only mode and can defrost the coils, making sure that there's no risk of any ice buildup. Having the extra temperature controller for ice protection is, is critical. I've seen some other hacks out there that totally ignore that precaution. So make sure you've added that second controller um, so you don't have problems with ice buildup. While we're here, let's cover a couple of other details. First of all, light bulbs. There are a ton of light bulb choices out there on the market. Most of them are round. And remember that the purpose of our use of a light bulb here is just to focus that heat energy on a single, very small temperature probe. And we don't want to add a bunch of heat to this room. We want to go with the smallest wattage as possible. And the best way to take advantage of that small wattage is to focus all that energy into one spot right on the temperature probe. And the best shape of light bulb for this purpose would be a spotlight type of bulb like this. So we're not radiating that heat energy in all directions and we also have a nice flat surface on which to mount the temperature probe on the front here. 
taken this foil off a few times for demonstration purposes so it's getting a little flimsy. We'll just take care of that right now. This foil tape works wonderfully. Coolbot suggests you use just aluminum foil for this and you could probably. Uh, I really like this foil tape because it's sticky. It's really easy to mount and it stays where I put it. So you don't have to add any tape to your your foil after the fact and it cleans up a little nicer. You can experiment with lower wattage bulbs if you like. I've, I've just kind of settled on a 4 watt bulb here. I tried a, a 0.5 watt LED night light at first but that didn't get warm enough to activate the air conditioner. Before switching to this 4 watt version I also started with a 7 watt LED light bulb. Same setup, still a spotlight. This one had an ordinary light socket on the back, so it was easier to just uh, connect it here with my socket adapter. I had to get an ad additional adapter to make this GU10 fitting work in my socket. But that just allowed me to gain a little bit more in efficiency, moving down from a 7 watt bulb to a 4 watt bulb. So I've got a little bit less heat pumping into our, our cooler all the time when this light bulb is on. Not a big deal. We're using a lot more power for the air conditioner in the long run too, so um, if all you can find is a 7 watt bulb or something in that range, that's still going to work really nicely for you. It won't get too hot. Another detail to note is that the position of this probe in the fins can vary from air conditioner to air conditioner. We had another air conditioner in here earlier and the best place for that probe was on the bottom because ice buildup started on the bottom first. This particular model, ice buildup starts on the top first, which we noticed after observing it and therefore the temperature probe should go on the top where the coolest fins are. So if you are noticing ice buildup on your air conditioner, note where that ice is forming first and put the probe right in that spot. And you may need to adjust the settings a little bit on your, your probe controller as well, but I'm happy to help you with that in our online classroom as well. The original cover for your air conditioner does not need to be replaced. All it really does is impede airflow anyways. The last point I'll make in here is to encourage you to keep your fins clean, both inside the cooler and out. What I do for that is just uh, grab an old toothbrush, run it up and down across the fins to brush out any hair or dust particles that have built up. And I wanna do this both inside the cooler and outside. Um, any gains that you've made in efficiency with your nice setup up here won't really matter if your air conditioner is filthy. So keep it clean and you'll be in good shape for the long run. And once you've got the system set up, you just need to plug it in, walk away, and it does the rest, which is really the beauty of it. So let's take the final step right now by inserting this temperature probe behind the foil of the light bulb. That will in turn activate the air conditioner, which is already turned on. I've had the door open in here and been talking for quite a while with the air conditioner off, so it's up to 9.6 degrees Celsius, so that's why the light bulb is already on. <clears throat> is trying to give heat to this probe. Once we insert it, that probe will warm up in a few seconds and tell the air conditioner that it's too hot in here and it needs to turn on. So let's just wait for that. Oh, there we go. Now I can walk away and it, it should do the rest for us. Gotta love automation. More time to play with my kids. More time to grow vegetables. More time to sit on the couch. Not like I ever sit on the couch. Who am I kidding? All right, let's get out of here. We're done, let's wrap this up. Goodbye, Coolbot. So there is the much cheaper alternative to the Coolbot that performs all of the same functions we do certainly still owe a big thank you to the Coolbot company for popularizing this technique in the first place. They showed us exactly what we need to do to control an air conditioner and use it to cool a, a walk-in cooler space, so thank you for that Coolbot. Whether you choose to buy a Coolbot unit or not, still certainly take advantage of the resources that they share on their website. They've got installation manuals that are helpful uh, just in understanding the different components of an air conditioning system that you need to modify to get this to work. They also have a wonderful list of compatible air conditioners that work with this technique and a nice sizing chart that you can use to make sure that your air conditioner has the right cooling capacity to match the size of your room. You don't want to have an oversized air conditioner because then it will be cycling on and off too often and you don't want to have an undersized air conditioner because then it won't 
obviously be able to keep up with the cooling needs. So check out their website and if you do decide to buy a CoolBot for some reason, at least you do yourself a favor and use the referral link that I'll share below and save yourself a couple of bucks. But really, you might as well save hundreds of dollars and use our full setup here. I'll share links to all the pieces of equipment that you need below as well so you can set it up just like we've described here in this video. Then the only problem that you'll have left over is what are you going to do with all that extra cash? The obvious choice is to sign up for our seat to table course and take your vegetable game to the next level. The next best thing would be to buy more insulation for your cooler because the more you invest in insulation now while you're building your cooler, the more gains you'll have in energy efficiency in the long run and that'll just keep paying you back over and over down the road. That's all for this one. For additional support with this project and all your other vegetable growing endeavors, head on over to our online classroom where you can participate in live Q&A sessions and learn more about the tools, methods, and resources you need to grow your own food. Bye for now.